complete tour of the Legoland California theme park. And yes, what you see behind me, this skyline of San Diego is actually entirely made of Legos. This is in Miniland USA, the heart of this theme park. I'm gonna get back to here in the moment. I wanna start this tour out in front of the park so you get the complete view of everything. And I'm gonna turn the camera around so you can see what I can see. Let's go. All right, here's the security checkpoint park entrance. We're gonna go through that in a moment, but let me show you what's out here in front. There are two hotels right out in front of the gate. The newest one is the Castle Hotel, 250 rooms in there right in front of the park. The hotel's valet parking right in front of it with general parking and preferred parking just beyond in the big surface lot. The other hotel, the original hotel, the Legoland Hotel, also really neat themed rooms. You and your kids are sure to enjoy it if you wanna stay right next to the park. All right, let's go through security and I'll see you on the other side. All right, now that we've got our ticket checked, we are officially in Legoland. They call this area the beginning. They've got guest services where you can do reserve and ride to pay to bypass the lines in busy times of year. They've got not a mini market, but the mini figure market. You can rent wheelchairs, strollers if you've got kids. They've also got diaper supplies and things like that. This park is really kids friendly, even baby food. Who is this park geared for? I would say families with kids. 12 and under. So you're gonna find lots of things kids like, like ice cream and like potato chips. And here, if you are an adult and you need to get some coffee for your caffeine fix, you can do that too. They've got all of these Coke freestyle machines around the park. 20 bucks gets you a souvenir cup for a day, or you can get it with like actually like an annual pass for the cup for like a whole year. Uh, there are two ways you can go from the beginning. You can go, actually technically there's three. One, you can go over to Dino Valley that they are currently under construction. Two, you can go over to the Sea Life Aquarium that's over this way that we saw on the other side. Or three, you can go over this way, which will take us to the Ninjago Land, Mini World. And so we're gonna go to the right because that's the only place we can go right now. Um, you can walk on the side here by the lake or through the gift shop. This big shop is a really big Lego shop, so let's go ahead and walk through here. If you like Legos, you will love this place. They've got a gigantic Lego panda, though interesting color scheme on him right there. You can get your Legoland hat, you can get plush Legoland characters, you can get Disney Lego, uh, calendars, icons. You can take a picture with Lego Batman. Uh, there's lots of great Lego merch in here. Or maybe take even a selfie with a Lego Stormtrooper. And they have a lot of characters that run around the park. Like, for example, when I was here last weekend, we saw this character running around the park. Uh, so you can take selfies with a lot of characters. I am here on a weekday in January, which is why it is not that busy. Uh, if you come definitely in the summer or on a weekend, there will be a lot more people here. We're passing the first aid station on the right in case anybody gets hurt. And over here on the right is the Ninjago land with the Tory gate right here. This ride, <clears throat> Ninjago, the ride in the back is a uh, motion ride where you kind of like pretend you're a ninja and you shoot stars out different characters uh, with your hands. They've got the ninja kitchen that has some Asian food and they've got a neat Lego sculpture here with kind of the Japanese wave and then they've got a little gift shop ooze warehouse and some things that kids can climb on in the back and places you can take pictures too. Throughout the park, we'll see a lot of carnival type attractions here in the Ninja Challenge. For five bucks, you try to throw the ball, bounce it off the board, and put it right into the box. Over here, we've got Build and Race, where they have a like gigantic Lego Ferrari, and uh, you can take pictures in the gigantic Lego Ferrari back there, make your own cars, race them. They've got Lego Mindstorms back here, we can program computers. They've got a pizza restaurant. We're gonna check all that out in just a little bit, but we're gonna go to Miniland first as we go by the Coast Cruise. If there's one ride you wanna start your trip with, the Coast Cruise is a good one. It is a boat ride that takes you around the lake in the middle of the park, and you can see a bunch of the Miniland models from the boat that you actually can't really see all that close from land. So I'd recommend if you're looking for a leisurely ride, the whole family can enjoy to start with that coast cruise at the beginning. And right before 
we get to Miniland, there's this little boat activity here where you can build a Lego boat and then you can kind of race it down the hill and see how that all works. Now, Miniland USA, the heart of this Lego land is really cool uh, because there are all these Lego sculptures of popular attractions in the USA. First up here, we have the Lego Las Vegas Strip. We've got the Treasure Island right here. We've got Madame uh, Tussauds at the Venetian. We have the Mirage Volcano on the right. New York, New York Hotel, the MGM Grand. It is really neat to walk through the Las Vegas Strip in 120th scale. And even like cars and things like that move. They've got like a, like a Coke delivery truck that like drives around the streets in front of the Excalibur. Uh, and yes, I, when I was here uh, just the past weekend with OC Girl and the Princess, uh, my wife looked at this and said, is there really a Sphinx in front of the Luxor Hotel? And you know what, there is in fact a Sphinx in front of the Luxor Hotel in Las Vegas. Most people don't realize it because uh, people just don't walk there. They, take, they walk in from the Excalibur typically. They have the San Diego skyline here. This is one of the newer parts of Miniland. They keep building new areas. They used to have a Star Wars attraction with us no more, no more Star Wars in Miniland. But they've even got Coronado Island out there with the Hotel Del Coronado, the Coronado Bridge, the Del Mar racetracks, the San Diego Fair, many of San Diego's most popular attractions, the library at UCSD, University of California, San Diego, uh, the Cabrillo National Monument Lighthouse at the end of Point Loma. Over this way, we've got something not in California. We have the New York City skyline. Uh, and yes, there's a Statue of Liberty out in the water that you can see. Uh, but you know what's funny? I think getting ready for their Dino Valley exhibit, they've got a whole bunch of dinosaurs that are taking over New York City. Oh no, dinosaurs. Uh, and then they've got the um, where the world, New World Trade Center is, the train station underneath, they've got that built out over here. Over this way, you can see San Francisco with the Golden Gate Bridge, and then they've got boats that you can actually control over on that side. So this Mini Land USA is pretty neat, uh, and our four-year-old daughter, when she comes in here, likes to spend a ton of time just looking around this thing, uh, enjoying it, looking at the mini figurines. You know, she enjoys building them at home, and so I think she enjoys seeing all of them here. This is, if you're coming to Legoland, this is probably the second thing I would recommend you do after you take the cruise, is just come around and explore Miniland USA. Uh, and actually, uh, this is the third Legoland theme park that was ever built. The first one is in Denmark, right next to the original Lego factory. It was built uh, in the 1960s. And then the next one was opened in the UK, in the United Kingdom. And uh, then this was the third one built about 25 years ago. Here we have Legoland Washington DC. And I think the cool part of Miniland Washington DC is the Marine Corps band that actually performs out in front of the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. This is super cool. You can hear the music and you can press these buttons in case you want them to like play different things. Uh, I guess it doesn't make them play different things, but there's some different sounds that come out. Uh, so basically they've recreated like the National Mall area. So you can see the Washington Monument. You can see the Lincoln Memorial, the Jefferson Memorial, and you can even see the double-decker buses uh, that go around Washington, D.C. You can see some police boats, and you can see some actual ducks uh, that are enjoying this, too. Okay, they have some shows that they do out here in this area with kind of the fake grass, uh, and now we'll go ahead and leave Miniland USA, check out more of the rides and the attractions. They have a 4D theater over here with some 4D showings. And then over here is the pizza restaurant that we saw earlier on the other side of the Ferrari exhibit. So a unique thing about Legoland is it's not just a theme park with rides, but because this place is designed for kids under 12, they have a ton of playgrounds too. This is the newest playground in the park. This is the Ninjago training camp. 
Uh, so they got like slides and climbing things and you know these are much better than your typical playgrounds you'll find at your local park heavily themed for the different neighborhoods uh, and you know it's one of those where like how much money did I spend to come in Legoland for you to play in the playground but you know younger kids they do like their playgrounds okay over here we have the Bionicle Blaster and uh, what's the Bionicle Blaster? It's kind of like a like a teacup ride, uh, like the teacups at Disneyland. So they're like three things that spin around and then these things spin around. Uh, all of the rides here at Legoland um, will tell you like how tall you have to be, how old you have to be, how old you can be uh, tall to ride by yourself and how old if you ride. So here you have to be 42 inches and four years old to ride by yourself. And if you're smaller than if you're at least there, then you need to be accompanied by an adult. Or if you're at least six years old and 48 inches, then you can ride by yourself. So many rides here have that. Like if they're small, then they go with an adult. Or if they're a little bit bigger, then they can go by themselves. This is the pizza and pasta buffet. So if you're with a whole group who likes to eat a ton, you can do the all you can eat over here. Uh, adults are $24 and kids are $12 at the buffet. There are legitimately a few roller coasters here at Legoland. The first one up on our tour is the Lego Technique Test Track. And you can see there are these fairly small cars that go around. So this is a true roller coaster. I mean, it goes pretty fast. It's pretty adventuresome for sure. Uh, so, you know, it is uh, certainly none of the rides here are like uh, a Six Flags Magic Mountain or something, but fun for thrill rides. Uh, here is another one where they'll show you 42 inches minimum with an adult, 48 inches by themselves. This is a ride that has the reserve and ride, meaning that if it's busy, you can pay more to like bypass the line at a certain time. All right, now we're coming up in the Egyptian themed part of Legoland. This is based on 1920s Egypt. First thing is Pharaoh's Revenge. This is kind of like an indoor playground where kids can run around and there's foam things and there's these balls that they can shoot from cannons up there. Uh, our uh, daughter's favorite ride at Legoland, uh, and I have to qualify this, but she's four years old, uh, is this, at the time I made this video, is this ride. This is the plane ride that goes around in a circle and goes up in these corners and goes kind of fast. Great for uh, the littler ones. All right, over here is uh, the uh, Lost Kingdom Adventure, a dark ride that goes through there. We've got Beetle Bounce, which is a little kid's version of a drop tower. You see it's just a, what, seven seats or something like that. Goes up and down, not too scary. We've got more carnival type games in this area. We've got snacks, you can get hot dogs for six bucks, churros for five bucks chips, drinks, waters. Not The food here is theme park prices, but not Disneyland prices. Uh, one of the things I like about this park is food is actually kind of reasonable. Uh, in the Dune Raiders section, we've got this cool slide, uh, like you would see often at a fair. You can't see the top of it because they put shades on it to keep it cool, but you take a burlap, ba burlap bag or potato sack, walk up to the top and slide down. There's like an additional side that I've never seen anybody go down yet. They've uh, got this classic squirt into the thing and like pop the balloon and here we have a Lego donkey. There are tons of like Lego statues just all around and uh, I'm probably gonna skip a lot of them but you can also see how like the rides on these lines like this Pharaoh's Revenge you know today weekday pretty short line but on weekends that line can be pretty pretty long over there. All right, we're gonna go up on the hill in the back, but if you went down the hill, you would go back to Miniland USA, the heart of Legoland. Uh, here we have a Lego spider, has a big tail, no climbing on the Lego models. Uh, and apparently here is like for the other theme parks in the USA, they actually build the models here and then send them to the other Legolands in the USA. Uh, they've got Legoland Florida, and then most recently Legoland New York that have opened 
but really they've been expanding Legoland. They've even got like Legolands in Korea and Dubai. Um, so they're quite expanding the Legoland theme park empire. All right, up here, this area is themed on kind of like the Knights of the Round Table or castles or those sorts of things. Uh, this ride is a ride where you like, you ride a horse. Uh, kids have to be over four years old to do this, but they ride a horse like this around this thing. Only kids can ride it, no room for adults in there. Uh, quick pickup food over here on the right is the chicken crown. Also open on weekends when it's busy, they serve chicken nuggets right next to the Dragon Roller Coaster. Another small, I'm gonna call it Tame Roller Coaster, tamer than the Technic one. You can ride that one at 40 inches tall. Okay, we can see a Lego Knight over here. And uh, in the gift shop in this area, you can get some uh, swords and some shields and some dragons. Oh, and if you're here with your kids, by the way, this park is entirely cashless. They don't take cash, they don't take cards, but they have these machines where you can put your cash in and get a card. So um, yeah, there's that. If you're like, well, I got a bunch of cash, or I want my kids to only have 20 bucks to spend things, you can do that there. Uh, over here, we got the ice cream shop, and over here, we have the Coke Freestyle, another refill station. This is where I mentioned you can buy the one that is valid for 365 days. You can come back uh, $30. If you got an annual pass, makes a lot of sense, um, which is in fact, we have annual passes. If you're looking to buy an annual pass, seems like they always have a good sale around Black Friday. We got our annual passes for about $100 off buying it over the Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, this is one of our favorite places to eat in the park, Knight's Smokehouse. Uh, I'll show you around this place briefly, but this is like basically all the way in the back, all the way at the top, but it's pretty like legitimate barbecue that's in here. They've got two sides when they're not busy. They've only got one that's open, uh, but when we come in here, you can see they've got like cornbread, muffins, they've got big turkey legs, they've got sausages, chicken, ribs, pulled pork, uh, and then you can get all your sides like corn or fries or beans. And if you want healthy stuff like fruit and salad, well, they've got that too. Uh, oh, and I said it's kid friendly. They've got milk, you know, three bucks. So yes, that's more than if you were just buying milk from the store and pouring it out, but it's also cheaper than milk at Disneyland. And they've got a big area to sit back here with shade sails to keep you cool. More carnival games. Here we've got the fish that you try to grab with a fishing rod over on the left. We've got basketball shooting the hoop. We have another playground here on the right. This is more of like a forest themed playground here in the hideaways. This one is a big multi-story playground that gets pretty tall, kind of like a really big tree house. One of my favorite places to eat at the park is over here for dessert. Uh, this place sells apple fries and it is currently under construction, so they're not open today. But when they are open, you can get the granny apple fries for $7. Uh, if you only have one dessert thing, definitely check that out. Over here, we have the Deep Sea Adventure. Uh, in this one, 12 passengers climb into a submarine and actually go through an aquarium where you'll see uh, water animals, wildlife, aquatic animals is what I was looking for as I was distracted by the deer over there that are made of Legos. All animals in this park, with the exception of fish and ducks are made of Legos, but we saw some real ducks earlier. They've even got some Lego ducks that are down here too. All right. As we go down this hill, you can see the lake that we started at with Miniland USA down there. This is the wheelchair accessible route this way. It's a long sloping path to go down. This park is super uh, wheelchair friendly, super stroller friendly. Obviously, a lot of parents come with young kids with strollers. And uh, the other dessert cart or dessert thing, if you don't get the apple fries, is to get churros. Uh, they have churros, they come with a dipping chocolate, two churros with the one dipping chocolate, $6.99 from here. 
Okay, plentiful restrooms in the park. Uh, lower, kind of lower toilets for kids. No real kiddie toilets. They do have some family toilets, but in most of them, I, I do feel like the toilets are lowered so kids can use them more easily or more better. More carnival rides on the right. Over here, we've got uh, one of the water rides. This is Pirate Reef and you get in, I'm oh, sorry, this is Splash Battle. Pirate Reef's over on the left. Uh, I think it's fair to say you got here is Splash more. Battle. You ride around in a boat like this and then you can squirt guns and other people can squirt you. And you can see here in January, this ride is not very popular. It's not that cold today, it's 60 degrees, but most people don't wanna walk around and be all that cold. Uh, they have lockers that you can put your stuff in. If you're gonna go on the water rides, you don't wanna get wet. They also have a splash pad over here. I should point out, this is not the water park. The water park is actually back there and has a separate entrance. The water park is only open seasonally. They do have changing rooms too that you can change over here. And if you really wanna get yourself dry, they have a uh, like a dryer you can put some dollars in. And then they've got this Captain Cranky's Challenge, uh, which is like a, I don't know, actually, oh, Captain Cranky's Challenge. We're gonna, we're gonna see it the other way. So I'm not gonna go up that line to uh, show you that. Keep Captain Cranky's challenge in your mind and where that entrance is as we go around the corner. It's this weird ride that you see from one direction and then you're like, how do I get on it? And you get on it over here. There's a burger kitchen restaurant with a coffee shop here that has a nice overlook of Miniland USA. And we go over here and we see Captain Cranky's challenge. It's that boat that is spinning around and around and around. So kind of like a big teacup. I'm not a super fan of rides that just spin. I guess I get, I get really dizzy here in my, in my 40s, in my extra elderly age. Over here on the left, we have Skipper School. And this is one where the kiddos can drive a boat. Uh, it is a slow ride. It's not very fast, but it's a lot of fun because the kids can drive the boats themselves. Uh, it basically has like, uh, two sides of the track, one on the left, one on the right. You can decide which one you go because you get to get the steering wheel to do it. And you go around this little lake. Eh, the ride takes about five minutes because the boats are pretty slow. This is usually one that doesn't have very long lines because people look at it and go, Hello, production. Yeah, hey, how's it going? Yeah. All right on. Nice to meet you. And uh, thank you. I always love it when people say, hey. All right. Up here, we've got brick bros which is one of their gift shops but i like just how they theme these things you know like it feels like you are in a lego town so we'll go ahead and walk through this little gift shop and then we'll pop out the other side uh brick bros is kind of like a like a surf shop i guess uh you know there's a lot of surf shops with surf inspired clothing where you can get your flip-flops, you can get your shorts. So if you didn't come prepared for California weather, you can come prepared here. This gift shop also exits out from this thing, which, uh, what is this thing called? This thing is the Adventurers Club. And uh, we'll do a quick walk through here. If you've got kids that are like, too small to go on rides or the line to the rides are too long, then you can come in here. And so in this thing, you're supposed to look for these two keys that are hidden in the rainforest. And uh, here we've got like monkeys in the side. We've got like this guy. So this is kind of like a Egyptian, oh like, and they make noise you walk by. We've got like a skeleton back here. In case you're wondering, this is sufficiently scary for a four-year-old to walk around and see the snakes and the dim lights and the, the spooky, ominous music. I think we see one of the keys right back there. Uh, they've got like a mummy and uh, they've got like the sarcophagus back here. And then as we, oh, they've got like a little arrow to tell you like, look over here, go over here. What do you get right here? And, a microphone that maybe doesn't do anything or you can talk into and talk like the mummy 
and this way we go into the, the frozen part of the cave. So now we're gonna look for the second key in the ice kingdom. Ooh, it's frozen in there. There's a big ice cube back there. We've got some wolves. There's a cute little ice cave the kids can go into. But then we've got this guy right here. And then they got says, can you touch the fish? So of course you try to touch the fish over here. Oh, 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 here he comes. Here he comes. Wah. All right. Uh, oh, and if you want to know where that second key is, well, I'm not going to give it away. You'll just have to find it yourself. It's not that one. It's one that's in there. And then we exit back out through that gift shop. This is the entrance to the water park. When is it open? When it's open in the summer. When it's summer, I will do a tour of that. So if you want to see it, subscribe and hang on to the summer. Or if it's already the summer, uh, check the description or the end of this video where I'll put a link to that video. Over here, we have the Fun Town Police and Fire Academy. Uh, the way this works is you get in one of these, uh, either fire engines or police cars, you like pedal it or pump it over here to the fire hydrants, and then there's some hoses that you actually use water to put the fire out. A good exercise on that. And then over here, we have the Lego factory tour. So. I told you that the first Legoland in the 60s in Denmark was built next to the Legoland factory. Uh, and actually people won, you know, they would come there to take tours of the factory. And so they built the original Legoland to help drive people to get the Legos and see the factory. And so they've made like a smaller factory tour here. This obviously isn't the real factory. These are machines that they've set up to show you how they make Legos, how they press the Legos and how they make them. And uh, it is quite warm in here. It feels warm like a factory uh, and uh, you know, these machines and these Legos, although, cause they don't really make them here. This factory feels like, like this thing doesn't work, like it doesn't move. So this isn't my favorite part of the park, um, but maybe kids don't notice they don't work. And uh, we have a free Lego magazine here. And then uh, how happy were you with your visit today? Uh, not great because, you know, how likely would you recommend this attraction? Not really, because a lot of things don't work. Okay, anyway, I'm not gonna do the rest of that. Here they've got maps of the uh, second Legoland in the UK, the Legoland here, and the original Legoland in Denmark. And then you can see all the other ones like in Florida, Dubai, New York, Korea, Japan, and Malaysia. And that brings you out into this, which looks like a gift shop, but it's not. All right, in the back, we've got the baby care center where you can take care of your kiddos. And then over here, we have a restaurant, one of the bigger restaurants and some Coke freestyle machines. Uh, and this restaurant definitely feels like a uh, European cafeteria. So if you've been to Europe and you've been to the department stores and things like that, this would look very familiar. It's like many European department stores have these cafeterias up on the top where you can get lots of different food and then of course shop in their department store. They've got kids meals over here where you get chicken tenders or hot dogs, $11. It comes with chips, juice, and a snack chicken or tofu curry, uh, Philadelphia sandwiches, spicy shrimp fettuccine, and then you pick up all the stuff that you want and then you bring it uh, to the cashiers over here. This one has a lot of seating. Probably, uh, I would say this is probably the biggest restaurant in the park, uh, at least for the amount of seats that are around it. Just coming out of that restaurant, we've got the driving school. This is one for kids that are six to 13 years old. They can drive a car around this track. Uh, and then there's another driving school for three to five years old, which they drive smaller cars around the track that go slower. There is a burger restaurant over here, and then there's a stage out in the back. Uh, we've got the Sky Patrol that has these little helicopters that go up in the air. And then above this hill in the back is 
uh, like Duplo Playtown, where in Duplo Playtown, it is another kind of like playground type area. And then there are these, it's not a drop tower ride. It's a ride that kids climb. They like pull on this rope to get to the top. Uh, I will not take you up there because that takes me off of my loop. We've got a little character place where you can get your character done. And then back over here, we've got Lego Movie World. And over here, everything is awesome because everything is themed on the Lego Movie. I even like that they have these Lego flowers here over on the side. Uh, but in Lego Movie World, they have a, not just any carousel, but in fact, they have a Lego carousel with cute uh, Lego looking figurines on it. Like if you got like a Lego horse or something like that. Uh, there's a climbing play structure in the middle that goes up a few different stories. There's the Unikitty's Disco Drop Ride over here. This is one of the newer lands, I should point out. This was slated to open in COVID, uh, but was like delayed a little bit because nobody was coming here. Um, so that's why everything looks newer. They even tell you like how long the wait is on the digital screen. Uh, if, because most rides don't have what the wait is, uh, on the Legoland app, you can see the wait times of all the rides. In here, they've got Emmett's Flying Adventure. It is kind of like Soarin' uh, at Disneyland or Disney World. It's a ride where you like fly in these seats uh, and there's like a dome projection screen that you can uh, have some fun while you're flying. And then they got a few shops over here. We got a show going over in the background with some Lego characters, a fountain in the middle, and then this is where it would continue on to Dino Valley. But since Dino Valley is still under construction, we can't go that way. And that brings us to the end of this tour. If you're coming to Carlsbad, you might enjoy my video right here all about the city that Legoland is in, the beaches, the restaurants, other things you might want to do here. Or if you're planning a visit to more of San Diego, you might enjoy my San Diego travel guide right here. I've even got videos on the zoo and the wild animal park too. Folks, for as usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in one of those videos.